going on Falcon fan this is what we're gonna do come back at you with another video so today we're gonna talk about second day joint practice with the New York Jets and let's talk about what we're gonna do Monday night football and see what these guys are gonna show us to this time so guys if you have not already go ahead and please subscribe to the channel please hit the notification bell so you know when I drop another video please hit Hit that like button so I know you guys like you heard I talk about. Then please share my video throughout the YouTube universe so more people can come in here and talk about these Atlanta Falcons. So despite what everybody's saying on on social media, especially the Jets media, um, I think the Falcons have had two productive days up with the New York Jets. And then they're going to culminate all, that off. With a Monday night football game getting better for the regular season. So um, today they went out there, no pads, um, more, you know, man to man coverage, things like that, 707 drills. They did a little bit more situation of football. If you go back and look at the Atlanta Falcons, um, com highlights you saw some great plays out there from the Atlanta Falcons. Like I said, despite what we want to believe that. The Jets just dominated the whole two days of practice. That's not the case. Um, like I said, you have to take things the way it is. There's no tackling. Can't hit the quarterbacks, things like that. But at the end of the day, you got to stack days. You have to build. And you have to get yourself ready. You know, the team you're going to be the start of the season is not the team you want to be towards the end of the season. So these guys, I feel, it's going in the right directions. Uh, and they got to stack days. And I think everything still is in a positive mindset for Atlanta Falcons moving forward. So what we want to see, you know, from, from these guys on Monday Night Football, um, the, the first thing for me personally, I would like to see the defense um, just come out and have show more better communication, you know, no missed assignment, things like that. Make it hard for the Jets to be able to move the ball. Right now, we don't know, you know, who's going to start, who's going to play. There's a preseason game, preseason game two. Determining how teams like to, you know, play their teams. They're going to sit their starters in, in this week and then play them in week three. We don't know how that's going to, going to, you know, lay out for um, the Jets. I, however, I feel that the Falcons, if you're looking at Arthur Smith, I think he's still going to get his starters just a little time to get out there. We have a young team. I think all those guys need to get some reps and make sure that we, like I said, the, the assignments, making sure we understand what the coaches are calling and we be able to execute those plays. So for me, the first thing I want to see the defense just come out there and make it hard for the Jets to move the ball, um, make sure they don't miss assignments, and make sure we can be able to get to the quarterback and be able to um, stop the run. The next thing, um, I want to see the offensive line play. I want to be able to see um, the offensive line. We can still run the ball like we was able to do against the Detroit Lions. And I want to see our pass protection and see if we're able to protect the passer. Um, that's going to be a big thing. Yes, we have mobile quarterbacks. But if we can get those guys time, hopefully they'll be able to find some guys down the field. Which brings me to my next thing I want to see is our receivers. The competition there. We know we still have a lot of receivers on this roster. And a lot of these guys are, in my opinion, fighting for like one or two spots left. I think the other spots are already filled with, with guys like Drake London, Brian Edwards, Alumni Sakis. I think Carter Harsh have sealed his spot as well. So um, that last spot, because I think the Falcons are going to keep five receivers, um, it's up for grab for a lot of guys. Um, according to Tory McHain today, Geronimo Allison was, looked like he was getting some reps and getting some time with Marcus Mariota with the ones. Um, that's not a surprise. You remember, that's one of the guys that initially I had put on the um, 53-man roster as a projection. But we don't know. Like I said, I think they need to have some speed out there as well. So a guy like Demir Bird, um, in my eyes, is still somebody that they definitely probably need to look at. Yes, they have London Sakis that can actually take take the um top off as well. But I think Demir Bird would be another guy that we could utilize in in space and being able to keep the defense honest and not sitting on all our um 
in in our short routes. So the next thing is the running back competition. Um, Quadra Allison, in my eyes, have made a good um, impression on this team. So I think he's definitely um, in position to actually make this roster, which leads to, like I said, tough decisions for this team. Um, Dame William has looked good. Of course, Carter Patterson, um, Tyler Algier is as advertised with what we can see so far. So that's four running backs right there. Unless Avery Williams could be the odd man out. However, I don't see that because of special teams. Um, and that's one of the biggest things we definitely need to be looking at is the special teams. We need to look at guys going down on on, on kickoff and kickoff returns. Those are big positions that, like I said, that sometimes we kind of forget about as fans. But special teams is important. You want somebody to be able to go down and make special team plays. Like I said, Frank Darby is a perfect example of that. He played most of his snaps with the special teams last year. So if he if he have a chance to make the team, it could be once again on special teams. And then, of course, he have the ability to be that receiver. So um, special teams definitely going to play a big part in the decisions that the um, this coaching staff and this regime make on keeping players. So we have to look at the special teams, especially in the return game. Um, Jared Barnhart been getting some some returns as well um with punt returns and kick returns along with avery williams and cameron batson so those are some things we got to be looking at like i said kickoff return um kickoff punt returns um who's going to be that safety protector um who's can actually step up and be that guy on punt team right things like that we have to look at on special teams to make sure that guys that's on the edge if they make their mark on special teams Hey, they might can be able to actually get a roster spot. Go back and and talk look, look at somebody like a Shannon Short, who's a seven round pick. He actually came down and blew up a guy on kickoff. And before he made that play, um, I think he was on the outside looking in. But that physicality that he showed on kickoff actually put him on the team. And once he got on the team, we all know he's a Hall of Famer now. So. That's what I'm saying. Special teams is a big thing. Don't forget about special teams. Terrell Davis is another guy. Same team, the Denver Broncos. So those are the kind of things that we need to look at. Special teams can actually cut up you to actually, you know, make a team. And then you can write your history from there. Look at guys like Arosa Gage. Um, came in as a special teamer. Just got paid, you know, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So... Um, that's one of the things we definitely be looking at special teams. Um, the last thing is um, the quarterback's command. We just need to make sure the quarterback still in command. I'm still, like, you know, got to get used to not seeing Matty Ice back there. I like what I seen from the quarterbacks last week with their mobility. But what we want to see to be able to have more of what Des Murder did, the, you know, the passing game as well, because we all know that, we don't want our quarterbacks running around. We want them to be able to utilize their arm and their legs to actually um, move the ball down the field. So that's what we want to see. Command of the offense from both Des Murder and Marcus Mariota. And then the last thing I want to talk about, um, just keep in mind that these guys got to make um, another cuts on the 24th. So the games... Um, it's on the 22nd, which is Monday, two days later, they got to make five more guys. They got to cut five more guys. So some of these guys, um, this game is really going to be important for them. Of course, what they did in the practice all week, but the, the preseason game is going to be important for some of these guys that was, that was on the fringe. So, um, just be out look on that. That's why the preseason is so important. A lot of people look at the first series, second series, but when you get into the third and fourth quarters, you need to be looking at some of these guys and see, you know, how they're playing and how they're going to make the team because some of those guys could definitely be, um, like I said, towards the 48 and the 53 guy. That's what we want to see. And we never know some of those guys could contribute to this team later on during the season. So, guys, that's all I got. Let me know what you think um, about what you would like to see um, from the Atlanta Falcons on Monday night. We should be the only show in town as far as football goes. I'm excited. Um, 
don't believe the hype that the Jets are so much better than the Falcons. That's a bunch of bull. We beat them last year. Just keep that in mind. This we're a whole different team. They are too, but they're not that much better than the Falcons. Like people would want try to want to make you believe. And this is your boy Ricundo coming back at you with another video. Peace.